Hello, welcome to this session on the Accelerating Expanding Universe. In previous sessions, we've spoken about uh, the observations of uh, Hubble to show that the further away a galaxy is, the faster it appears to be moving from us. And there's lots of indication that our universe is expanding. Now, this idea is an extension on that. And now we're thinking about it's not only expanding, but it's actually accelerating, getting faster and faster and faster. So let me take you through the steps which allow us to think about uh, the evidence for this statement. So this first one for evidence of an accelerating universe is to consider a supernova. So we know uh, here we have a dying to star becomes a white dwarf, and that process can be from a supernova. We know there's lots of different types of supernova, but the type we're interested in comes from a star like our sun. And when the sun runs out of nuclear fuel about five billion times, it will go through this beautiful death ritual, shedding its outer layers in a blaze of color while its inside squeezes down to a dense hot ball about the size of the earth. And this ball, aptly named a white dwarf, is where the story ends for the sun, but not so for other dwarfs. OK, because about two thirds of all stars in a galaxy live in pairs and binaries. And this union that becomes dangerous when one pair turns into a white dwarf. Okay. So the image I have here is the ring nebula uh, Mesa 57 with the white dwarf remnant at its core. So, as I said, about two thirds of all stars and galaxies are binaries. And if one star may run through its life cycle faster, becoming a white dwarf while the other star continues to shine normally, uh, this is true of the brightest stars in the sky, Cirrus, which is a faint white dwarf companion. Now the white dwarf is greedy, and if the orbit of the white dwarf and its companion are close enough, the white dwarf's strong gravity begins to tug the outer layers of the hydrogen gas from the companion and wrap the gas around itself in the process of creating a, a ticking time bomb. And we've got an artist's impression of this, of a white dwarf sucking off the outer gaseous layer of its partner. And as we can see, we'll have the rapid rotation of the dwarf creates an accretion disk. And therefore, we'll get a dense, hot hydrogen atmosphere. Now, if this becomes true, what we have is the hydrogen layer grows hotter and hotter and hotter until a critical temperature. And then the bomb goes off, a thermonuclear explosion as bright as a billion stars and a flash that can be seen across the observable universe. Because the process is identical for each white dwarf supernova, the event has a predictable and reproducible brightness known as a standard candle. And this is a type 1a supernova. Uh, this is, uh, was seen in our galaxy by Johannes Kepler in 1604 and five years before the invention of the telescope. And this image is actually a composite from three telescopes, the Hubble in yellow, the Chandra in blue and green, and the Spitzer in red of the remnants of the star that Kepler saw in the sky four centuries ago. And the ball of debris is now about eight years, light years across and is still expanding. So step three, uh, these supernova uh, can shine as bright as a billion stars for several days. OK, so they'll rival actually the brightness of the entire galaxy. So the image shown here shows a type 1a supernova exploding in the galaxy NGC 4526. Because the explosion is just a point of light in the sky, it looks like a star. The process and the conditions that create this type of explosion are effectively identical for every white dwarf supernova. So this means that they're great because they make some ideal distance indicators. Uh, the fainter they are, the further away they are. And we kind of know the brightness that they're going to uh, emit. So by measuring the brightness of the supernova flash in NGC 4526, we can work out the distance of the host galaxy. 
and uh, this is a, a really really important tool uh, because we've now got a way of measuring the distance to distant galaxies so that's a, a, a useful insight in itself Step four, I've written step five here. So uh, what we can do is the supernova uh, can be used to work out uh, distances. So if we can do this, and we can do this by carefully subtracting the two images using powerful computer software. So you subtract one image from the other image, and then uh, we can see what's left over and what is left after the subtraction of the light is the light from the type 1a supernova and nothing else so the brightness of that supernova can be really accurately measured which is great then uh, that means we can work out the distance to uh, distant stars perfect now here's where something interesting happens. Okay, so if we look at uh, distances of supernova using one type 1a supernova as standard candles to predict the distances uh, from brightness, and we use redshift distance to use observed redshift and Hubble's law to predict distance, uh, we're doing two different ways to measure distance, measure distance of distant galaxies. But if we compare this data, we find the supernova distance is further away than the redshift prediction. Now, this can only be explained by the fact that the expansion of the universe is being, has been accelerated for periods in the past. So because there is a, a lack of correlation between these two features, it indicates that we have an expanding and accelerating universe, uh, at least for periods in the past. So if we think about the accelerated expansion of the universe, rather than that being at a constant rate, uh, what we can see is our uh, expansion of our universe is likely uh, to have accelerated through periods. And you see this diagram here, I quite like this diagram here. It says dark energy accelerated expansion. So dark energy is uh, what has been used to explain this accelerated expansion in the past. Now dark energy uh, is a mystery in itself, I guess the darkness is kind of there, but if I look at my definition, dark energy is an unknown form of energy which permeates all of space and tends to accelerate the expansion of the universe. And that's pretty much uh, the statement of understanding which we're at at the moment. It is still largely unexplained, uh, but is thought to be the driving force. Uh, it just needs to be considered uh, in much more detail. So that explains the expanding universe and why for periods this has been accelerating and that has been driven by dark energy. I hope that.